Hey, and welcome to the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea Podcast. Excited for a road trip? Start it off right with auto coverage from American Family Insurance. J.D. Power ranked us number one in customer satisfaction with the auto insurance shopping experience among mid-size insurers. Get a quote at amfam.com. American Family Insurance. For J.D. Power 2021 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Cast, an adulting advice podcast production. I'm Danny Sheriff, and this is the place to come if you care about getting your period regularly. This podcast aims to educate, inform, and keep you motivated on your period and HA recovery track. Let's dive in. And guys, please remember that I am not a doctor and nothing on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always seek the advice of your physician. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea podcast. I am joined today by the lovely Meredith. Meredith is the, well, I mean, remind me, because your last name's not Meredith High, is it? No, not at all. Yeah, (laughs) it's not. So I need to know the story about what your podcast name is actually called, but it's called The High Life. And she also, she has her own story with AJ and she does work with women with AJ. And I'm going to get her to introduce herself, her story, what she does, and a little bit behind what your podcast is about. Yeah, take it away from me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. Um, it's such a treat to be on anyone else's show and not do the interviewing for once. It's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, my name is my full name is Meredith Wadsworth, um, and I am a uh, integrative health and intuitive living coach, um, facilitator, advisor, however you want to call it really. Um, Basically, I work to help people um, with holistic healing. So everything from um, physical healing to emotional, mental well-being, energetic, all of that stuff. Um, And it's sort of gotten to that point over um, my whole journey of figuring out that like that's what my healing required. You know, I went from a place of believing that my own healing needed to come from just physical healing alone. And then I went through a period of time where I was like, oh, I just have to work on the mental stuff and then the physical stuff will go into place. And over time, realizing that it really is the integration of all of those things. So whenever I work with someone, I always look at the whole person um, as that's how I've approached my own journey. And that's, um, I think, what really brings about change um, for the long term as well. Um, So the the high life, just briefly, it's spelled H-Y-E, and that stands for honor yourself every day, which is like the bare bones, like, you know, yeah, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) So getting it down to basically that is like the key pillar of everything that I do. So whether it is like nourishing yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, it is always about honoring yourself every day in some way, shape or form. And that's going to look different depending on the day, depending on the person, depending on what you're going through. Um, But at the end of the day, if you can go to bed saying I honored myself today, then you're on the right track. Um, so that is what my whole platform, my podcast, um, is about really. Um, yeah, (laughs) I love that. I, I bet that's some acronym that all of the cool kids use. And I was just like, never connected that it means honor yourself every day. It's, it's not, I mean, I, I've honestly kind of surprised that it's not like Ben, I mean, not because, not because of what I do, but like that before I created it, I was like kind of shocked that it hadn't been like used in that oh, way. Oh, so you coined it. So it's like your thing. I'm kind of coining it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to help make it a thing for you. <laughs> Please. That's really cool. Um, and I think that yeah. really ties in a lot with it, definitely ties in a lot with the message that that I send on this show. We have, I mean, my niche, I've talked very specifically, exclusively about HA. Mm-hmm. And we talk to, practitioners, experts, and also just women with their own stories um, about recovery. And we, I mean, I like I talk to the experts and we get into like the the science of it. And I also talk to people like you who we talk about the lifestyle, the mindset, and the fact that like, yes, taking some time to honor yourself every day is one of the biggest parts of the process for every single person. And so many of us get in this situation of loss of period because we have a tendency to honor everyone else and honor all of our commitments and honor, um, you know, the society's expectation of like being really fit 
healthy looking and high powered career person. And, but we never just like chill out and honor ourselves. So I'm mm-hmm. really excited to talk to you about this today and hear how you got to the point where you realized that's what you needed. So please share. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, I'm, I'm glad that you're sort of bringing it to the table in that way because, yeah, I mean, for me, my, like I said, my, my journey with, with self healing and just even getting into, you know, the, alternative medicine field to begin with all kind of started from a place of just addressing your physical health. And so I got um, certifications in um, integrative nutrition and then from an integrative health practitioner program um, course. And and I'm currently also studying for level two. So functional medicine testing and all that stuff. So that's still very much a part of, of what I do. Um, and learning the science about why I had HA and what was going on there. And as much as that was helpful for me to understand what was physically going on, there was still the the true healing for me came when I looked at it as a journey to reconnect with myself and figure out like who I really see myself as, how I was defining myself, what what I was letting define myself other than who I really am and and things like that. And um sort of looking at it from that perspective rather than just trying to heal in the physical level because you can't just address one problem. If there's still an imbalance in other parts of your life that that are supposed to nourish you, then like you can't just address the physical issues. And for me, this this journey, this recovery has really been about reconnecting to myself, discovering who I really am, rediscovering and also for the first time, like parts of me that I didn't know that I had. And so that's really what I try to emphasize whenever I work with anybody or just, you know, try to talk about this more in general is that it's so much more than just getting your period back. It is literally about getting your life back, about getting the things that make you who you are, your vibrancy, your yes. sense of humor, everything. And you don't even know that it's gone because you're just, you've gotten so, depending on how long you've had AJ, you're just sort of used to this muted version of yourself. And for me, at least, like I couldn't make decisions on my own, really. I was second guessed everything. I, I like, I always had, you know, like times of feeling sad or happy, but they were just kind of like within, you know, tighter brackets. And now I have like a full spectrum of emotions, which, yes, sure, sometimes I'm like surprised at how I can feel really down, but also like my happy is so much happier. And I also don't stay down for as long as I used to, you know, like, so it's that's normal. That's human to have like that you know, to experience all of it. And that's okay. Um, but my relationships have improved. My, uh, my sexuality has improved, you know, like my interest in, in, in boys again. And that was something I was like, I was like, I don't know, maybe I'm just like really not into like <laughs> relationships as much as I thought I was. Like I was so into like my independent self and like, that's good too. But, you know, you, just things that you think aren't even connected to AJ are in the end. And like you you learn that in the recovery. Um, So yeah, I mean, I I can start sort of from the beginning, but it's ultimately sort of a long story. I don't want to like take up too much time talking about it, but because AJ really has kind of been a part of my life for almost all of my adult life so far. And, and even before that, I, um, I only realized that I really had HA when I went off birth control about almost three years ago, but I had a hunch before then that I wasn't going to get my period when I went off because I'd been on the pill for about um, 10 years before I went off, but intermittently I would stop for a few months because I'd forgotten to buy the next one or whatever, um, and I wasn't getting them. So, But I just kind of chalked it up to, you know, it's normal to not get your period for a few months in between. Like, you know, most girls take at least three months after stopping the pill to at least get a period or whatever. And so I just like made all these excuses in my head. Um, but then, you know, a few months turned into a year, turned into two years to two and a half years of me like not getting my period. And and what I'd always kind of knew or had been told, you know, for a while was like, oh, like, you know, you're pretty thin, Meredith. And like, you know, both from family can, you know, having saying little things here and there. I mean, I was never at the point where I was like really like dangerously small, but definitely knew that I was on like the tinier side for my size and or for my height or whatever. And um and after years of 
trying out various diets and various fitness methods and just being very body conscious um, and very aware of how I looked and um, that that starting at a very young age, basically ever since I was eight is when I went on my first diet. Um, and then I remember when around the age that I was first getting a period, I think I got maybe one and then I didn't get another one after that. And it a few months went by and, and then my mom had me, um, my hormone levels tested and I came back having low estrogen. Um, and at the time the doctors were like, oh, you know, she's on low, she has low estrogen. So we're going to put her on the pill to protect her bones, which is a common thing that you will hear from doctors, but that's not true. Um, anyways, so they put me on the pill for that and then I was getting regular periods. Um, but that kind of just masked the problem. Um, and from there I still was continuing to diet and, um, all this stuff. Little did I know, like little did I, I wasn't really able to put the pieces together until I was really diving into, um, the physical elements of what goes into HA and everything. And, um, that I learned that, you know, that dieting that I'd done when I was eight is what caused my period to be sort of irregular when I should have been getting it in the first place. So really I could have had HA since I was like 13. I don't actually know because of the, the pill. Um, but so when I, uh, realized that it was really a problem, I wasn't getting my period, um, you know, for two years after going off the pill, is when I was really starting to dive into understanding what was going on with HA. At this point, I'd already been studying integrative health and medicine and everything. Um, but admittedly, I had first gotten into this world of wellness because I wanted to continue to learn how to eat better and how to exercise better and like all of those things, you know, to improve again my physical fitness and all this stuff. Um, I mean, I sure I still I loved learning stuff to help other people, but a large part of my interest in it was coming from that that selfish place and that self-conscious place. Um, and the more I studied and the more I learned, the more it's over time, like become a, a realization that I don't, you know, I don't want to be doing this to help other people to like lose weight and look fit. Like I'm doing this to help people break away from that mentality that they need to look fit and, and eat better and do all this stuff and to remind them to get back in touch with themselves and think less about what society is telling them to do in order to be healthy or be well or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, so I um, realized that I needed to gain weight and that was hard for me to really accept. So even though I had found um, the uh, Nicola Rinaldi's book, um, No Period, Now What? And um, had read other books on hormones, you know, Alyssa Vitti's In the Flow and uh, Women Code and stuff like that. And um getting understandings around, you know, how nutrition and, and, and weight and all that stuff can impact your hormones. Um, I also got functional medicine tests done just because I was just like looking for all of the reasons why it could happen and not wanting to really accept the fact that I needed to just eat more, stop moving and, and all that. Um, because I, I, even though I was like the perfect sort of example of someone with HA, I told myself all the reasons why I wasn't because, you know, oh, most people who have HA are like in marathon runners are super intense athletes and they do all this. And I only do like low impact workouts and like yoga and like all this stuff. But I was moving so much. Like I was living in New York and walking everywhere. And I was like tracking my like 10K steps a day and like doing all that. And for as, as like move mobile as I was, I was not eating enough for that. But I also told myself, oh, but I'm eating till I'm full. Like I'm not starving myself. But I still had food on my mind all the time. And when I finished one meal, I was thinking about what am I, what am I having for dinner? And like that was like a, a big chunk of what was going on in my brain. Um, and it wasn't until later on, you know, and I'm figuring all this out that I realized like even though I was still eating to quote unquote satiety, it was a lot of like fibrous bulky foods that were temporarily filling but not actually nutritionally dense. Not only that. But my stomach had shrunk over time from my metabolism slowing down to try to conserve the little amount of fuel that it was actually getting. It's like a survival biological thing. So all of these pieces starting started to fall together. And more and more and more, I was like, okay, this is really what I have to do. I really have to do this. And no matter how you know good I think I look right now, like I am not healthy 
if I'm not getting my period and my bones are going to suffer for that and and I'm going to regret this if I don't do it and I know I want kids someday and all of that. So um, it definitely was not an overnight like all of a sudden I'm all in kind of thing. Like it has – like I know some people have been able to just – dive right in. And that's so incredible and all the power to them. I I wish that I had done that. But for me, it was really gradual and I needed to slowly sort of convince myself that this was the path that I needed to take. Um, And yeah, so then, I mean, from I'd say all in all, when I like really sort of mentally committed to going all in, it was maybe about four four or five months. of really just, you know, eating whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, um, not working out intensely, but, you know, still like living my life and still, you know, walking and things like that. But um, uh, between when I, uh, when I, I think I first got a period, like maybe two months into doing that. Um, But then over the course of like five months, have I gotten, um, more of them back and things are starting to regulate again. So, um, I don't, I don't, I feel like I'm talking so much, but no, I was going to actually, I was thinking she's, um, oh, she is. She's told this story before. Like it's very well articulated, um, timeline and I appreciate the details. I think it's, you're not talking as much as you think you are. (laughs) (laughs) And I, I, there's so much I love about this. And basically we are, the same person yeah in so many ways there's the the difference is between you and I was like our lifestyles were different I was no one was ever concerned about my weight or like never told me that I was small and I did a lot of high impact exercise Mm -hmm. but in terms of like the the inner dialogue and the process that that it took and and the fact that I was like I was also eating super high volume food that was low calorie yeah and thinking I was full, but I was actually just like full of cabbage and, yeah. um, and, and, and being like, just not ready to make those changes overnight. And so much compassion too, because I like, you just had, you have done so much work to get to this place that I am right now. And you want me to undo it all? Like, I'm so confused. This yeah. is really hard. This is, oh my God. I've I've only been congratulated for how amazing I am at being such a high performing person and I'm yeah. very confused yeah. why you're now telling me that this isn't working. Yeah. Oh my god. I had uh I remember like just sitting on my floor and I'm I'm back in my um I I've been spending lockdown at my parents' house um in uh like my childhood bedroom, my my um high school bedroom and so not only was I going through like the the peak of my recovery, but I was back at home, not living like on my own in in a city or whatever. And I was just having like a, a huge identity crisis. I was like, I am an adult and I'm living at home in my high school bedroom. And I have to completely abandon my former identity of being this like really fit, like wellness person. Um, you know, I, I had been, I had been um working in fashion when I first moved to New York after graduating college and even at that job like they the the team that I was working on I was in a uh, merchandising and buying team and whenever they had samples come in I was like sample size so I was like the office model and I like loved that I loved that attention I like it made me feel good about myself but it also made me feel really shitty about myself when something didn't fit me right even though it was a sample and like those often don't fit right but like it was just something else that contributed to me feeling super tied to my body. And then after that job, I was, you know, trying to get into wellness and everything. And then I started working at a fitness company. And at that company, um, it was, uh, it's this incredible method called PVOL, which I still, still love and it's low impact. And that's what I loved. Um, but they started had asking me to teach it. And so I learned how to teach that. And, you know, as an instructor, you're sort of expected to look really fit and all that. And mm-hmm. so just all of these things were tying my sense of self-worth um, to my appearance and how fit I was. And on top of that, I was trying to brand myself as a health coach and like posting food all the time. It's just like it became my whole life was fixating on what I was putting in my body, you know how often I was moving my body, how I was moving my body and like all of this. And to suddenly go from that being my life to 
I have to completely detach from all of that. I felt so lost. I was like, I have no idea who I am, what I want, where I'm going, if any of this stuff actually matters to me, or if I was just fooling myself the whole time because I was so fixated on my appearance, you know? And so I empathize so much with anyone who feels like they're going through that right now or they're scared to go through that because it is it is very hard. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But the beautiful thing is that you will get through it. You will go you will go through this and you will come out such a stronger person and so much more self-assured and you will know yourself better than you do right now or did before and it is so worth it. So worth it. Yeah. And you talked about uh, this fear of losing your identity and this, this identity that you'd worked so hard to create. Yeah. And you, and like the other option kind of feels like going and gaining a bunch of weight in your, at your parents' house. And you're like, whoa. So this comes up all of the time, like every single week. And I bet you get this too. It's like, I'm afraid of losing my identity yeah. of being the fit girl. So will you please tell me about the reality of what happened, because for me, um, it's all, it's kind of funny. It's like, I was so afraid of losing this identity. And then I now look at it. And I'm like, I am not sure what I think is so good about that identity. Yeah. Like the identity I have now because of everything I went through is wildly amazing. It's amazing. And, and you had also touched on get how you got your life back, like getting your period back. It, the, the process of getting your period back reintroduces you to passions and relationships and, yes. and your life. So what is the reality of what happened to your identity? Oh, it just expanded. Mm-hmm. It, it was so narrow before. It was literally tied to those things. You know, whenever I – people would ask me, oh, like, what do you like to do? Or like, they would ask me, what do I do? And then I would tell them, and like, you know, I'm a fitness instructor and I'm a health coach and like all this stuff and like super proud. And then they'd be like, okay, well, what do you do for fun? And I was like, well, that, that's what I do for fun. And I like, literally, like, it's true. I was being honest. Like I was doing all of those same things. I had the like, exact same experience when someone yeah. was like, what, so what, what else do you do for fun? <laughs> and I was like, uh, no, that's literally everything that I do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I would say that and I would be like, I would almost be like really proud. Like I had like cracked like the key to work life balance. Like why even separate them? Just like everything that I do for fun is also my job. And like, how wonderful is that? That's like, you know, also something that I think people are feeling pressured to do. Like just side note, like in the world of like entrepreneurship and everything being online, people are like, if you would do your passion as your job, you never have to like work a day in your life. And like all this since it like, the beauty of, uh, of no, doing that. I can tell you that like making your job, your passion is really tiring. And it's, sometimes you want to take a sabbatical from your passion. <laughs> literally. you Yeah. You lose the desire to do it in the first place. And to be honest, like I had to take a big break from wellness, fitness, like all of that stuff, mostly because of my, it was hindering my recovery, but also because I had to take a step back and be like, is this really me? Like, is this something that I am actually passionate about? Or is it just because I was formerly like tying my identity to it so much and um, taking that break and and recovery com- the the combination of those things did remind me of all the reasons that I I was interested in in wellness in the first place but again it's it's from this n- now mindset that health and and well-being are things that we can achieve but only in so much as we know who are who we, who we are and that we're not relying on external validation for our own self-worth and that health is the integration of everything as opposed to just the fixation on one element of our health. Um, But yeah, I mean, my identity expanded completely from, you know, still, still having some of that, you know, fitness, well-being elements in it. You know, I'm a yoga instructor now and that's still something that I love to do. And I, and I love to teach classes on Zoom and um, I incorporate some of the the functional training that I used to teach at PVOLV into my yoga. And so I love that. And people still know me for that. So it's still part of who I am. Um, But people also see me now as someone who is just a lot more candid and honest and can feel all of her emotions. And 
Um, I'm also somewhat of an artist. And I, that's something else that I've been sharing, you know, publicly. And I've been selling some art pieces now, which is really cool. Like I would have never spent time like cultivating other forms of creativity, even if I knew I liked them, because I would always think, oh, this time could be better spent, you know, like studying more health and learning more about this and like, you know, working out and moving and like who has time to like sit still and paint a picture when you could be walking and like all that stupid talk <laughs> that like HI puts in your head. Um, I think we're, I like, again, we're the same person. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, we both started podcasts probably, I assume during this time, like, because you had the space for that. You may I have actually, had it beforehand. I actually started my podcast two years ago. Okay. But, so then yeah. if we scrolled all the way back, the things that you were talking about in the mindset you were in was probably quite different. Yeah. And it's so sometimes it's funny. Some This is one of the reasons why I do love the podcast is even though sometimes I go back and listen to episodes and I cringe a little bit. <laughs> um, it reminds me of how far I've come. And it reminds me that, you know, there were still parts of me that um, – that I see f have fully bloomed now that were still part of me then, but that I was a little bit shyer to express, you know? Um, and it's just, it's almost like a auditory journal of sorts um, and timeline. So it's nice to go back and listen to those sometimes, even though sometimes I'm like, oh, wow. Like I was, I was really deep in it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Do you mean deep in it as in like the things you were saying or really just, um, yeah, like what, what was it that you think is different? I think, I had, I think even, even evidenced by like the kind of people that I had on the podcast, like even though they are like still incredible experts and stuff, they were very much focused on like the physical aspects of how you can do wellness better and like the supplements you can do and like the, like the saunas and the cryotherapy and the colonics and like all of this stuff that like I was so into because I was looking for all these other reasons why I wasn't getting my period, how I could be healthier without actually facing what I needed to face. And yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, I think I've been good in that even from the, when the podcast started that I was not trying to be overly preachy of like, you know, you need to eat this way or uh, move your body this way. I've always kind of come, been from this, you know, one size does not fit all kind of perspective, but I definitely still felt that there was like a greater influence on, um, a, of what you were doing physically on your health and less of an influence on like your connection to your true self. Like when I started the high life, honor yourself every day was still like that obviously hasn't changed, but my personal understanding of what honoring yourself every day means has. Like when I first came up with that, it was from this perspective of like honor yourself every day by moving your body, walking 10k steps a day, drinking eight like glasses of water, like all of that stuff. And over time it's becoming it's become honor yourself every day by getting to know yourself, spending time with yourself, loving yourself and, and learning who you are and all of those other things, um, you know, creating boundaries, like those kinds of things that, you know, aren't so tied to external. Yeah. Yes. Look, anyone that's been doing a podcast for a few years is going to have the exact, like their, everyone's thoughts. I don't hydrate like everyone else because I'm not everyone else. They drink what they're told to drink. I drink what helps me rehydrate and recover. Pedialyte Sport because it works and so do I. Pedialyte Sport. Hydration beyond the hype. Excited for a road trip? Start it off right with auto coverage from American Family Insurance. J.D. Power ranked us number one in customer satisfaction with the auto insurance shopping experience among mid-size insurers. Get a quote at AmFam.com. American Family Insurance. For J.D. Power 2021 award information, visit JDPower.com slash awards. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. And opinions on topics evolves over time. Yeah. But when you have a podcast, it's on record. Yeah. And you're just able to see it. I'm exactly the same. I used to write blogs and articles and stuff to just like help people figure out how to eat less fat, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So we, mm -hmm. it, it, it's expected. And the, the biggest, the biggest podcasts will say the same thing. They'll have the exact same, um, 
experience. And I meet many women who want to do something like this, like what we're doing, to create something, to put stuff out there in some way. And they, they're they afraid to do it because they're like, well, you know, my my opinion isn't well formed enough yet. I haven't gotten on to the other side of this problem yet. I don't think I can speak about it until I've achieved X, Y, and Z. And then that means that they're never going to do it. Whereas you and I, like even actually the AJ podcast is very new, but even from the very first episodes through to now, I have a, just speaking to so many different women, I my opinion and experience, experience and knowledge has just evolved so much even from then and that's a part of the process you have to be willing to let that happen yes if you want to create and put this kind of stuff out there yes exactly and that's that's something else too that I've like been very much embracing is that you know honoring honoring yourself every day is allowing yourself to change your mind and allowing like your thoughts and opinions and your values to change and grow along with you and not feeling like you need to stay the same. We are not static. We are very dynamic, you know, energetically, mentally, emotionally, all of that. And honoring that is so important. Um, So yeah, don't be waiting until you feel like you know who you are like through and through because I hate to break it to you, you're going to keep changing over life. Um, so why not just like get going and and ride with it um, and see where it takes you. And if things change, like speak about that, be candid about that. Because when I, whenever I feel like those kind of blocks blocking me from talking about something or whenever I felt like, oh, you know, I shouldn't talk about HA until I've fully recovered and all that, I would think about all the people that helped me through it and how they didn't wait until they had figured it all out to start talking about it and how grateful I am that they didn't wait, that they just shared what they were going through when they were going through it. And so why would I wait when I want to help, when my goal is to help people, why wait? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last thing I'll just add to it too, is there's that, that kind of age old, I assume it's age old. It could be, I have no idea how old it is saying of if you're first works that you put out there don't make you cringe a little bit you didn't put it out soon enough right yep yep if you wait till launch till it's perfect then like you've waited too long yeah you waited way too long (laughs) yeah (laughs) i know it's 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 really true so you as well like talking about that whole you getting your life back thing when you said that it was like word for word exactly how i think of it right you could just get your period back or you could get your whole freaking life back. And I don't think any of us realize, I just don't think we realize the the gravity. It's just huge for me. Every day I wake up with so much gratitude for the flexibility I have in the kitchen, that I, the way I'm able to be spontaneous with social events or decisions, the way my thoughts, because you touched on this too, are not consumed by what my next meal is going to be. I can't believe how much time we spend thinking about what our next meal is going to be. And I never thought it was possible to not be that way. Like when you meet people who who are like, I don't know, I'll just eat whatever, or I forgot to eat today or anything. Like I just, I don't, I wouldn't understand. And I can't believe I'm that person now. Yeah. Like yeah. What what else has been your experience with getting your life your like your life back? No, it's com- probably the same question as getting your identity back, but just yeah. like <laughs> well, tangible yeah. things. I mean, that's the thing. It's just like you don't realize like literally how much space those thoughts are taking up in your mind. And the reason that you feel like if you're at the very beginning stages and you're even just contemplating, you know, doing this and going all in and getting it back, like the reason that it's so hard to comprehend the fact that you could be happy even at a higher weight, you know, getting your period back, is it worth it, blah, 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 is because like HA has literally like blocked like the other kind of thoughts, like the beyond food and exercise that could be entering your mind. It has just overcome all of them because that's how like hungry your body is. That's how much it needs fuel. And it's a survival thing. And I like to, (laughs) this is how I phrase it like with my clients is like, when you really have to pee, all you can think about is having to pee. Like literally, you're just like, I can't do anything else. I can't have a conversation or I'm going to be like bitchy until I go to the bathroom, right? Well, it's the same thing. Like when you're when your body's like that hungry, all you think about is food. And 
it, it that's that's called mental hunger even if maybe you physically feel full or whatever so when that's all you can think about you don't have space to think about like the quality of your relationships or like you know your sense of humor is muted just like all of these things like you don't have the 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 space to think about other creative projects or like other things you want to do or your your attention span is shorter the amount of energy that you have to invest in like your job is shorter and you just like you, everything is just lowered and so when you go through this like you little by little discover like it, and it was not overnight, you know, like I'm not saying that, you know, at one point it was just like all of a sudden, oh, I never think about food anymore. It's like, no, it was very gradual. And till I started realizing, you know, days, the, the day would go on and be like, oh, you like, oh, you know, it's time, time to eat again. And like, but meanwhile, I had like done all this stuff and like was, you know, expressing myself in new ways and, and, um, you know, being more present with my family. Um, and it was just like, wow, like this is, this is so great. and. Yeah, I think one thing that also made me realize like how much my mindset had changed especially around food and everything was I um I was on vacation in Bali um which is where I had done my yoga teacher training and this was like in February or March so just before COVID. And um and it was right when I got back from that trip in like the first 2 weeks into lockdown that I got my first period back. But my last month or so of being in Bali um, I had met someone and I had like really fallen for them and just was feeling so good. And this, like God, as I was saying before, you know, bef- like before I'd started, you know, really recovering, I just like had really very little interest in boys at all or romantic, you know, relationships. Um, and because I was so sort of like in my head about things and decisions and self-conscious and all this stuff. And when I just, you know, through this process, just starting feeling surprisingly more confident in myself, despite feeling like I was going to be so self-conscious for gaining weight. And not to say that I wasn't still some, you know, self-conscious, but I started realizing where more of my self-worth comes from in my personality and the other things that I bring to the table that that elevated my confidence above like my attachment to my body. And not only that, but like being with this person who was so, you know, adventurous and carefree and like he had like you know, such normal eating habits that like, you know, sure, you know, he wasn't eating like junk food all the time, but like we would go and he'd be like, oh, I want a burger or like whatever. But like when you eat, you eat. And then when you're not, when you're not, you're often doing things and living your life. And like being with him and being around that, like got me in such a healthier place um, with food and like what it's like to just like be someone who, you know, eats normally and doesn't have this negative relationship to it all the time. Like, I remember being, you know, at meals with him and just thinking like, he, there's no way that I would even be with him right now if I was stuck how I used to be. Like, I wouldn't have done half this stuff. I wouldn't be at this restaurant with him. Like, he, there's, I would have been so high maintenance, like all this stuff. And not that like I'm was changing myself to be, you know, liked no, by another didn't. person, but like I had changed so much that it attracted someone to my life that. I had wanted all along, but I had not been allowing to enter my life because I wasn't going to be aligned for them. Does that make sense? Like, yes. I know it's like a little bit on the manifestation side, but it just was like, wow, it was really eye opening for me. And um, that, yeah, that was <laughs> a big turning point. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it's just the biggest thing. And it sounds like you, yeah, you got your period back not that long after. And yeah. I mean, so it's just not all about the food and the rest it's about that um that permission that your mind feels to relax and that it yeah it just knows that you're in this different place yeah. mentally um yeah. i'm so happy for you that that happened <laughs> oh thanks yeah <laughs> um and that's the other beautiful thing about this process too is that i know that it's hard to think about anything else besides getting your period back but when you start embracing the other other changes that are happening in your life through this process and it becomes less about like your body, less about just your period and you just start relaxing and giving in and surrendering to the process, like it kind of comes when you least expect it because like it, it, it's so much about recovering the rest of your life and not just your period. Like I'm sure that you've had experts on that talk about like the fact that your period's not coming because your body doesn't feel safe. It's in survival mode. And, you know... It, obviously getting yourself back to a a healthy weight and 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 all of that is important and to send those signals to your to your body to your brain that you're no longer in survival survival mode but 
stress is not just that it's not just that physical stress it's like that mental stress that feeling of 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 constant overwhelm or anxiety or you know cortisol all the time that you know, if you start to relax and um really enjoy like life again and what it's actually about and not like just focusing on food and exercise and all that all the time then like that's a huge part of the stress reduction and so mm-hmm. it's it's important to to look into that too Yes. Well, the thing that comes up for me with what you were just saying is if you're expecting to just get your your period back by focusing on getting your period back, like you're really not you're you're probably more likely to you're missing end the point. Up, you're missing the point and you're kind of potentially going to end up, you know, quote unquote like relapsing and yeah. and going back to those old behaviors because you haven't made any sustainable changes yet. Right. You you want to go back to the way things were. Yeah. But when you and and it's okay to be there because this isn't an overnight process for Not at so all. many of yeah. us. Mm-hmm. So eventually while you're in the waiting room and in limbo for this, you start to discover these new areas and and you start to be opened up to this whole new world. And that's actually like that byproduct of you going into this process is kind of what just plays such a a critical role in getting your period back. And you're, a lot of us are afraid, right? I'm going to lose my identity. I'm going to gain all this weight. I'm like not going to be as fit as I was before, et cetera, et cetera. And like, I just know that if I get my period, when I get my period back, I'm going to be happy about that, but now unhappy about what I lost. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't really work that way because you went through this process that happened over time. You were able to uh, like mentally adjust as you went. Yeah. And by the time you get to this point of recovery, by the time you get your period back, you are a different person and you actually like, if, if athletics, for example, is really important to you and truly is this part of your life and your identity that that you think it is at the time of giving up, that means it will still be there for you on the other side because yeah. it is aligned for you. Yeah. But if it was not meant to be and if it was actually a product of something that wasn't truly a fit for you that got you in this situation in the first place, it won't be there anymore and you won't care. Yep because you're a different person. That's what comes up for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely. And that was like something like when I was taking sort of my hiatus from, from all of this, like I wasn't putting out podcasts for a while. I like definitely, if you scroll back on my Instagram, you will see that it has gone through many different looks and changes. You know, if you go all the way back, it started as like this food account and and it's evolved and evolved and evolved. Anyway. um, But yeah, because I was, I was questioning like whether, my attachment to, you know, being, being this like physical fitness person was something that I actually desired. Or was it just because like, that's where my mind was all the time. And now that I have all these other things that I'm interested in, like, do I actually care as much? And turns out, you know, there is still part of me that, that loves that. And, you know, that still loves yoga and loves to teach that and, um, and loves to help other people connect with their body in that way. But it's from a totally different approach. It's from a totally different intention that I show up um, to, to teach now than before. Um, and I think that's, that's really where I think the, the switch and the difference comes in whatever it is you're doing. The, the difference between something being healthy and unhealthy is not the action itself, but the intention behind it and the energy that you show up with. So, I mean, this can be, um, you know, applied to anything, whether it's like how you're eating, you know, people are so used to labeling things as healthy versus unhealthy foods. And it's not the food that makes it healthy or unhealthy. It's how you're, how you're showing up to that food. And, um, you know, if, if you're eating a salad, but you're doing it because you think that you need to lose weight, that's not healthy. If you're eating a burger because you, you know, you feel like, I don't know, you're feeling sorry for yourself and you're just like in this rut or whatever, like, probably having that's not healthy. But if you're showing up because you're like, I damn deserve a burger and I like feel like I want it and that's what I'm in the mood for and like, great, that's a healthy choice. You know, it's all about like how you're showing up for it, I think. And, um, but that can also be applied to exercise. Um, 
to anything, you know, to a conversation that you need to have. Like, are you coming at the conversation because you're, you know, all riled up and you're going to freak out and explode at this person or because you're calm and collected and you've thought about it and you have, you know, thought points that you want to articulate in in an intentional and appropriate way. So it's like, that there there's not like a, an immediate positive negative healthy unhealthy you know quality to anything i think it's all about how you're showing up to it um i don't think it was a bit of a tangent but <laughs> no, but but it's true and i also yeah. want to like just reiterate that point where this isn't also like uh it's not like something that you're saying to mask how you actually feel. You're not like, oh, I know this is a bad food, but I'm showing up and I'm going to tell myself it's not a bad food. Like, no, when you do this, this personal work, you actually genuinely learn to remove the morals from food. And I have moments all the time where I'm just like, oh, I just like, I'll be journaling, you know, yesterday I did this and, and we had pizza and it was really good. And in that, in that process of journaling, I'd be like, and I actually felt like pizza was what I needed. Like I was it meant to have to, in that moment. Yes. It starts to feel like so nourishing and it just like – it just sits with you and like you stop looking. Like I think – this is another thing. I had digestive issues, which I know is very common with anyone with HA. And I had digestive issues and that's part of the reason I got functional medicine testing because I wanted to know why I was bloated so much and why I had like stomach cramps and like all this stuff. And I was convinced that I had to cut out these foods, blah, 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 blah. And – Everyone tells you, you know, you know, cut out, r- remove these like bulky, you know, too much fiber foods and like eliminate like sugar and dairy and all this kind of stuff and just like less, 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 restrict, restrict, restrict. And for me, my digestive issues completely went away when I started eating more and um, stop being hyper vigilant about everything that went in my mouth and just relaxing and allowing myself to have what I wanted to have instead of like fretting over the fact that my body was telling me that I wanted ice cream, but no, ice cream is bad. So instead, I'm going to have like just a fourth a cup of granola and then feeling really like I, oh, I still wish I had the ice cream and like all this back and forth and like, oh my God, now am I feeling crampy because I just had the granola and that's like hard to digest and like all of like you're so stressed <laughs> out when you do that that of course you're going to have digestive issues. It's like, stressful to listen to. <laughs> oh my God. Like that is just a snippet of what was 24-7 in my head. And like, I'm exhausted. Like, no wonder my body was just like, girl, turn it off. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I really hope that there's women listening who are like, oh, this is me right now. Yeah. And yeah. I'm trying to get out of this. And which which like leads me to a question about your coaching. So we both work with women um, mm-hmm. one-on-one who have HA. And the way I work with them often, it's like your lab work and stuff is like great, but let's talk about your life. Like, yes. what do you love? What do you want to do? Oh, okay. Now what's like the story you have in your head that you can't do it? Okay. And like, let's dive into that. And, and it always leads back to like have having your HA and like, well, maybe if we, if we work in some of this and take steps towards that to, to help introduce them to like what else is out there for them. Yeah. And that's a lot of what I do. And I'm curious, what does it look like for you and your clients? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, very much the same, you know, when I, when I initially start to work with someone, um, I, I first always offer, you know, 20 minute chat with me just to connect and see where, what you're struggling with. Um, because I, I do work with women with HA, but not strictly HA. They can be going through anything, you know, it, it can be physical issues. It can be, you know, they're going through a big life change and they need support. So it's whatever kind of support you need. Um, I, I offer those 20 minutes for us to just connect and see if we're a good fit for each other. Um, and then if so, I have them fill out a full um, health history form. So we do go over, you know, any physical things that you're experiencing, if that includes HA um, or anything else, but also, you know, where you're at mentally and emotionally and and spiritually um, and where you feel like you're you're deprived a little bit um, in like different areas of your life or where you feel like you need to give a little bit more nourishment. Um, and so then, you know, from there, particularly with women with HA, we do talk about the physical things that need to happen and sort of where they're at now um, and, and also looking at their past and how they maybe could have gotten into this in the first place, because that's important. You know, that's 
because there are, you know, physical things involved with HA or other reasons you could be missing your period that are important to look into, it is important to look at those at those yes, um, things mm-hmm. and, and be, able, be able to rule out any other potential reasons that your period could be missing. Um, and then once we sort of address those, then we also look at everything else, you know, the the um, the things like relationships, um, you know, your sense of spirituality, your community, um, your home life, and all of those things that can your your job that can add stress to your life, um, and could also be reasons why you're fixating on food and exercise in the first place instead of addressing the things that actually need attention because that's a huge part of it too. Um, so there's we work through on on, on all of it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Like, I love it. That's basically what I wanted to hear. It's like, yes, absolutely health history. Like, let's look at what's in front of us and the facts that we have here and what amazing low-hanging fruit we can work on that can be super game-changing. And then we're going to, like, continue to meet until you have this full life transformation that you so deserve to have. Yeah. And, And, like, okay, we're basically finishing up on time. Yeah, which is great. But I believe, and I want to see like what, if you have a mission or a belief here too, but that there are so, so many, the world would be a completely different place if we all were menstruating properly. And the fact that so many of us have these issues is holding the whole world back. And there are women listening who are destined to do wildly incredible, amazing things. Like someone is going to, out there listening, Nobel Prize winner of the future. Yeah. Someone is going to do amazing research in an area of just such incredible impact on the world. Yeah. And this is being taken from them by obsession with diet and exercise yeah. or whatever it is that's holding them back and causing them. Yeah. So and my mission is to just like, I want to free someone of that. And I wait for the day that someone comes and says, Thanks to you and, of course, all of the many other amazing women putting out information, I achieved this massive thing because I just truly believe that this is like addressing HA is like a low-hanging fruit that we can achieve, like that we can do to change the whole freaking world. Yes. 100%. Yeah. No, 100%. I I can can tell you that just – you know, based on the women that I that I already have known and, and worked with, and and even if they haven't, you know, fully recovered yet, just like the how far they've come in in the way that they talk to themselves, um, and even in just sort of like the energy that they have when they show up to our conversations, to our sessions, like there is so much beauty in this process. It's that, and and when I say that. It doesn't mean it's a beautiful process. It is. It can be an ugly process, but what comes of it? it I mean, it can. It, there's so much grace in it, and it's such a beautiful evolution that in the end, like you are such like a, a more vibrant, you know, beautiful person, like your version of yourself, because you're just so much more you. You show up more as you, and you're full, and and you are more um, open to the potential that you have and um and what you have to offer and and you stand more firmly in that than you do when you're just sort of living as the shell of yourself. And yes, so I think what you're doing and sharing on this podcast is incredible because I think this is such a common problem that many women don't even know is a problem or they don't even know yet if they have HA because maybe they're still on the on the pill or for whatever reason and um, so, I mean, whether you have it or not, you know, I think it's it's really important to take a step back and and really reflect on your lifestyle and and am I holding myself back by fixating on things that really aren't important and don't represent accurately who I am and what I can bring to the table? Um, because there's just so much more that you that you have to offer to this world, and the world needs it. So. Mm-hmm. Honor yourself. Yes. Honor yourself every day. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the And the question, yeah, that I just want to leave listeners with from this conversation is the identity or the story that you have about who you are leaving behind prior to getting your period and getting your life back. It's like 
I just want you to know that the person on the other side of the process is a thousand times more vibrant and amazing and fulfilled yes. than that person that you're holding on to so tightly. Mm. Yes. I have, I, I have to say, you know, I still have photos, of course, on my phone that I scroll back and, and, and find where, first of all, it's almost shocking to me how many selfies I have of myself that like, it just is physical evidence of how much I thought and cared about how I looked. Just like all the mirror selfies, like all of this, like, oh, look at my abs, like all this stuff. Stupid. Anyway, I will occasionally find one of those pictures of myself and maybe at like some of the hardest points of my recovery, I would feel like I missed, you know, that body or whatever. Now I just look and I have so much compassion and, and so much love for that girl that, you know, didn't see her full potential and didn't see her worth outside of the way she looked. And I, I almost just would want to like give that girl a hug and just tell her like, life does not have to be like this. Like you are mm-hmm. worth so much more than this. And so that's a message that I want anyone to hear um, because there's, there's so much more out there for you than, than that. So yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much um, for just speaking all of this of light course. to everyone today. I freaking loved this conversation with you. Yes, it really me too. Fast. It did. Where can people, um, yeah, listen to you, work with you? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my Instagram is at the high life. So that's T H E H Y E life. And, um, and I have a website, feel the high.com. Um, my podcast, the high life podcast, you can listen to anywhere. Um, and yeah, you can reach out to work with me, um, through my Instagram, you know, profile link or through my website, um, or wherever. So I would love, love to chat with anyone. Amazing. And all of that will be in the show notes, guys. Meredith, thank you very much. And everyone have an amazing day. Thank you so much for listening today, guys. Please subscribe to the podcast. And if you could head to iTunes specifically and leave a rating or review, that would help so much because it makes it easier for other people with HA who are Googling around to find the podcast really easily so if you do that you're doing a service to all of the women excited for a road trip start it off right with auto coverage from american family insurance jd power ranked us number one in customer satisfaction with the auto insurance shopping experience among mid-size insurers get a quote at amfam.com american family insurance for J.D. Power 2021 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin.